a look at the team to watch presented by Amazon Business. We are going to look in depth at this Ohio State team. But, Maddie, why Ohio State number one in your draft here? Uh, let me think here. Um, well, hey, if they can't put it together this year, then they're never going to put <laughs> it together. Right, That's yeah. why. <laughs> yep. This is – if Michigan was the team of destiny a year ago, then Ohio State is the team of destiny in the Big yep. Ten this year. Well, guys, the Ohio State Buckeyes are now just single digits away from their home opener against the Akron Zips, and there is just so much talk about this team. We know the talent is there, but with all the new players, we haven't seen it on the field. So I'm going to talk about that, as well as the new allegations that have been coming out in the Michigan cheating scandal. But before I begin, I would really appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe. It only takes 5 seconds, plus you can always change your mind. We are now on the road to 1,000 subscribers, and with your support, I believe we can get there super fast. Alright, so recently, Urban Meyer appeared on the first episode of the Triple Option podcast alongside Mark Ingram and Rob Stone. One of the most intriguing points he made was about Will Howard, Ohio State's new quarterback. He described Howard as a big question mark for the team this year. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's certainly something worth exploring. And he did praise the Buckeyes roster, calling it potentially the best in the past decade. That's high praise coming from someone who knows the program inside and out. However, his comments about Howard have raised some eyebrows. But let's break down what Meyer actually said about Howard. He acknowledged his athleticism, noting that he's surprisingly fast and a big dude. Apparently, he ran 22 miles per hour at practice, which translates to a sub 4540 yard dash. That's impressive speed, especially for a quarterback of his size. But here's where things get interesting. While many people have been praising Howard's running ability, there hasn't been much talk about his arm. This is something that should really concern many of you, given the importance of a strong passing game in Ryan Day's offense. They need his quarterbacks to make all the throws, short, intermediate, and deep, even to the opposite hash or sideline. These are crucial skills for success in Ohio State's offensive system. When Howard was at Ohio State, there were questions about his throwing ability and accuracy because while he could make all the throws, he wasn't always the most accurate passer. And this is something he'll really need to improve on as a Buckeye. The early part of Ohio State's schedule might not fully test Howard's passing abilities. Games against Akron, Western Michigan, Marshall, and Michigan State likely won't push him to his limits. The real test will come in Game 5 and 6 against Iowa and Oregon. Iowa is known for its disciplined defense, and the game at Oregon will be a hostile environment that will really test Howard's composure and decision making. So these games will most definitely give us a cleaner picture of Howard's development as a passer. One thing to keep in mind is that Ohio State's offensive coordinator this year is Chip Kelly, which is another thing that Meyer pointed out. The combination of Howard and Kelly could be a great pairing, especially with Kelly's great expertise on the offensive end of things. Alright, now let's move on from Howard. I really do think having four easy games like the Buckeyes have right off the bat is not a good thing. It's kind of like what Michigan has done over the last few years, and it's hard to get some of your top guys like Abuka, Tate, and so many others in midseason form facing Akron. The reason I'm saying this is not because they won't play in these games or anything like that, but when the score is 35 to nothing in the second quarter, the backups will already be in to avoid unnecessary injuries. I guess Michigan State is a legit opponent, but I would not be shocked at all if it's one of those games where it's like 24 to 3 or 21 to nothing at halftime. I don't know how bad Michigan State is going to be, but if they're as bad as some people are saying, it's going to be four straight games where the starters aren't playing a lot. And once they get to the Iowa game, you already know Iowa starters are going to be in full form because no matter who their opponent is, they play tight close games. And injury risk is a very real thing. I'm not going to deny that. And Caleb Down said that he wanted to see some touches at running back this season, which could be interesting. And in these first few games, I would not be against getting him in for two or three touches on the offensive end because later on in the season, if either Judkins or Henderson is hurt, he could actually be used. But at the end of the day, even if there is injury risk, it's football. Injuries are going to happen. I mean, we've seen guys get hurt in the weight room. People will always find the most random ways to get hurt. So I don't think Ryan Day should avoid putting guys out on the field or in certain positions to try to avoid injuries. It's just not logical. In terms of the college football playoff, looking at Ohio State's schedule, with the talent they have, I just don't see any way that they end the season with fewer than 10 wins. I'm not saying they have an easy schedule. I mean, they have to play Oregon. Iowa is ranked now. You got Penn State at Happy Valley. It will probably be a whiteout. That's going to be a very tough game to win. And then the Michigan game is always 50-50. But yeah, I think 10-2 is worst case scenario, and even that record should be good enough to make the playoffs with the new format, which I think people are going to fall in love with. It just makes things so much more interesting throughout the season. I think the running game is really going to carry the team this year. I know I talked about Howard. I like him as a quarterback. He has a lot of experience under his belt, but I mean, I think Judkins is the best back in all of college football, and Henderson is not far behind, and he's been involved in this Buckeyes offense for years, so nothing will come as a surprise for him. 
When you look at Ohio State last year, there was like an oddly negative narrative around a program that just won 11 football games in the second best conference in the country, with a freshman quarterback under center. So going back to injuries, if someone like Will Howard got hurt and a freshman had to come in, what would this team look like? Well, probably like the team that was on the field last year that got 11 wins. There was just so much talent at every position throughout the field, and I just love the coaching staff. I really do wish that Ohio State played a few more tough out-of-conference games this year. I understand in years past when only four teams got into the playoffs why you would limit the tough matchups, but now with 12 teams making the playoffs, if you play a tough schedule, you legit could probably go 9-3 and three and make it in. So just in terms of getting players ready for the big moment, I don't see why you wouldn't try to get as battle-tested as possible for the playoffs. Honestly, I'd be more impressed with a team that's 9-3 and three, but played 8 ranked teams than an 11-1 and one team that only played 2 or 3. But that's just my take on things. Let me know your view in the comments below. To me, the worst part of college football is not NIL deals. It's not the portal. It's not any of those things that older people are driven crazy by. It's about how many weeks only have two or three good games because teams like Ohio State, Bama, and Georgia are always playing the Akrons. They're always playing the South Alabamas. To me, it's just a waste of time. But there's definitely a lot more to it. I know I'm just a random guy that doesn't have the inside information, but I just don't get it. But overall, I think Ohio State is gearing up for an unforgettable season. It's been a while since there's been this much talent on the roster, but I think we all know what the most important thing to do this season is. They have to beat Michigan. If they don't, that will be four straight losses for Ryan Day, even though Michigan is starting to get more and more exposed every day for cheating. Recently, more news came out that they hacked into OSU's practice footage, which is just truly insane. That's all I have to say for this video. Thank you all so much if you made it to this point, and let me know how you guys are feeling about this team as we head into week one of the season. Thank you all so much if you made it to this point, and if you enjoyed and haven't yet, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe, because your support truly does mean the world. And also, let me know what you would like to see next, and until then, I will see you all later.